Computer Museum in the heart of Silicon Valley, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering OpenStack Silicon Valley 2015. Brought to you by Marantis. Now your host, John Furrier. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Silicon Valley. This is the Cube, Silicon Angles flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. We are here for day two of coverage of OpenStack and Silicon Valley. This is where all the thought leaders are here. A lot of companies are here. Obviously Silicon Valley is where the innovation engine of entrepreneurship and also the big companies trying to figure out this next generation infrastructure, unlocking the future potential in a software driven, software enabled environment. And our next guests are Boris Rensky, co-founder and CMO of Marantis and Jonathan Donaldson, VP and general manager of software defined infrastructure at Intel. Um, guys, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks Good for being here. Uh, Intel obviously uh, announced, uh, you guys, Marantis announced a $100 million fresh funding real fat finance, you could have some dry powder uh, as the quote <laughs> bubble is bursting, which we'll talk about later, but uh, another question. Uh, Intel, again, um, the big blind, as we say in poker, you know, is out there, it's $100 million, you guys led the round. Right. You guys have been really behind the big trends where you see big data with the Cloudera investment, that was obviously right. game changing. You guys backed out of the distribution business of, of big data with Hadoop, going all in with Cloudera. Now Marantis, again, a big bet. So. What does this mean? I mean, besides the support from Marantis. <laughs> right, so we like to, you know, if we see trends, right, so uh, obviously being the, the silicon landscape, which uh, covers a, a tremendous amount of the data centers, we have a good landscape to kind of view across and, and see the trends that are happening. And then also from that same uh, trend line and from that same landscape, we get a lot of feedback from our customers. And so in the Marantis case, right, uh, we were getting a lot of feedback from customers. How do I get OpenStack uh, in my enterprise, right? How do I get private cloud to be real for me? And obviously we had a great relationship with Marantis as well as some of the other announcements that we'd made. Um, and so we said, well, this is a perfect place uh, for us to reinvest um, for some, some work upstream and then some work that really uh, can move the needle on uh, private cloud. Obviously we're in the Computer History Museum, obviously former home of an Intel back in the day, but Intel, Moore's Law, and Lou Tucker mm -hmm. yesterday from Cisco, you know, who actually has a product in the museum, you know, like Lou, you know, you're an old old guy now like us, but <laughs> you know, he's actually got a product here in the museum, and he, he was commenting that, you know, it was the fastest machine he's ever built, it was the fastest in the industry for a year, and he was highlighting Moore's Law, obviously right. Intel, you know, Gordon Moore, Moore's Law is coming to this cloud, right? Absolutely. So that means a complete changeover. You guys have made great investments, certainly everywhere from wireless down to the chip level, compute, multi-cores, all this stuff's happening. Is that the part of the vision here, is to get Intel's assets into the market with the software-enabled infrastructure? Is that kind of the vision? Absolutely, and I think it's a little bit of a two-pronged approach, right? So obviously we have a tremendous amount of those uh, of those valued assets in the market already, and so it's exposing the value that, that our customers are asking us for, so making sure that they receive the value for purchasing Intel, and then on top of that is exposing the new features that we're coming out with so that we can continue to drive that Moore's Law innovation cycle um, through the rest of the data center. Boris, I got to ask you as an entrepreneur, you've been, the trials and tribulations of starting a company, you get to a point now where the market is at an inflection point, certainly with OpenStack. Yeah. Uh, the cloud obviously is out there, it's games on, it's totally, you know, the genie's out of the bottle, cloud is the future. Um, right. How do you feel about this? Because you guys are in a good position, you guys have been out talking to customers, the Intel backing, certainly huge endorsement, the future of integration is coming, where performance matters, so you got Intel watching your back there, but you guys are still out there with customers delivering cloud and OpenStack. Right. What is the current state of Marantz? Obviously, this is going to be a good trajectory for your company, but what does it mean for you guys and to your customers? Um, so I think that uh, um, I mentioned this before. Um, I view the uh, um, uh, collaboration with Intel and uh, now kind of uh, the uh, this, this motions that Intel's making under the uh, Cloud for All initiative as a um, kind of a symbolic uh, period in uh, OpenStack's life, because uh, Intel historically has had a very solid track record of uh, backing um, various. Um, open technologies. And um, Intel has always been behind OpenStack, but uh, it's just in the last several months that they've joined the foundation as a platinum member, been accepted, and uh, now have started really making very meaningful contributions uh, through the Cloud for All initiative. Um, 
you probably know about the uh, work that we're doing with Rackspace, now we're doing the stuff with Mirantis. And uh, to me, that means that, uh, um, you know, OpenStack has reached a point where there is a consensus in the market that uh, the open cloud fabric of the future is OpenStack and Intel is going all in. And um, another interesting data point, uh, which relates to a lot of the things that are happening here around containers and things like that, is uh, um, according to the uh, recent uh, market survey that was done by McKinsey just, just this year, uh, when people think of private clouds, uh, they think of three options. And the three options is VMware, Microsoft, and OpenStack. And uh, there's a lot of interesting stuff and dynamic happening around the containers and all that stuff, and people can argue to death that uh, maybe OpenStack is not the same as VMware and will never be there, and that it works with VMware, it doesn't work with VMware. But the thing is that you know enterprises and CIOs have a very uh, short attention span. Uh, they don't have time to uh, kind of you know look into how these technologies work together. They look at things uh, in a fairly kind of you know straightforward fashion, and uh, the straightforward fashion that they look at it right now is that private cloud means three choices: two choices of Microsoft and VMware for. Uh, proprietary cloud, open private cloud is OpenStack. Uh, so it's exciting times ahead of us at Morantis, I think, that uh, you know we have a tremendous responsibility to make that vision a reality at this point. So talk about the, the dynamics of um, the customers. Right now, customers hear um, OpenStack and they're a little nervous. And I, we had a quote yesterday on theCUBE here, where the comment was, hey, the cloud with OpenStack is a puzzle piece kind of concept, it's Lego blocks, or yeah. it's an engineering opportunity for, for this open fabric, and that message resonates, that's clear, we hear that. Right. Um, but everyone worries, worries about one-offs. Right? Yeah, yeah. How do you have one-offs, and how do you scale a one-off? So the comment we heard yesterday in theCUBE was, and I have to look back at who, who said, I can't remember which guest said it was. Range of bias problem. Um, <laughs> no, 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 but it was, it was a good comment, because I was basically yeah. saying, you know, there's a problem here, is mm -hmm. one-offs doesn't really create a scalable cloud, and no, I think it was Todd from IBM, he said, yeah, they want to basically do one-offs with standard components. Right. Which really kind of hits home to kind of the value of an open fabric. If you standardize, yeah. you then can mix and match yeah. technologies to cobble together or engineer together right. whatever yeah. system, from POC to full-scale production. So, okay, take us through, yeah. what does that mean? Okay, standard yeah. components, That's and how do customers mix and match, and then what's under the yeah. hood via Intel and or other things that are abstracted away from yeah. the customer? So I think that um, there's kind of two sides to this. On the one hand, um, I uh, completely agree with the sentiment that um, you know there has to be some opinion, there has to be some degree of prescriptiveness when uh, you're delivering a product to the customer because the customer wants a standard, that's true. And it's also true that uh, to a large extent um, in the OpenStack world we've seen a lot of snowflakes because of the nature of what OpenStack is, right? Mm -hmm. It's a pluggable framework. But um, I think that the most dangerous thing is to assume that something is a standard before it really has become a standard. And uh, OpenStack and the uh, you know, data center cloud market, is, uh, it's, a, it's a very new thing. So when it comes to, and, and it touches upon many things, many, many data center technologies. So there's you know, SDN, there's software defined storage, there's container standards, we have Rocket and Docker, all this stuff happening, right? So uh, the ideal kind of vision you know, would be like, just let's standardize. OpenStack will have one SDN, one software defined storage, one container framework, et cetera. But the thing is that because the market is so new and so nascent, uh, so many things are changing around and moving around, uh, that's not a very wise strategy because the one thing that you will embrace uh, might not be the thing that is the standard of tomorrow. So the OpenStack approach historically has been about actually uh, um, you know, creating the glue for different components right. and leaving some options as far as an SDN or storage or all of these things. And then over time, as uh, certain areas kind of uh, mature, right, there, there's always going to be some standard, a couple of standards that will emerge. And these standards will naturally plug the you know, empty holes in the uh, OpenStack puzzle. Uh, so, and I think that the OpenStack community is approaching this completely correctly. So this glue, does that mean control plane? Is that what you're kind of referring a to? API yes. is control plane. I, I, think, I think Boris is correct in that, you know, if for enterprise customers, they want semi-packaged solutions, right? It's like ordering a, a car or buying a car, yeah. right? You'll have certain brands of vehicles that you like, and you will then say, okay, based upon whatever the characters of that vehicle are, I'm going to have certain yeah. options that I would select in there. I think you're going to see the same type of thing happening in the software stacks. You're going to, you're going to trend towards uh, that package solution that offers 
the general uh, care abouts that your business needs, and then you're going to uh, pick some of the, the guardrailed options internally. Uh, so Jonathan, solve. if it's a car analogy, let's go with that a little yeah, further, take it to the next level. Are we in kind of prefab, <laughs> prefabricated <laughs> you know, um, designs? Is there is there an assembly line? Is there cars coming up? Is there Ferraris coming so up? Is there have, a Model T? I mean, and take us through have, the life cycle. Exactly, you have, I think, uh, all of the above, right? So depending upon if you're the kit car kind of person, right? So use the analogy yeah. and you're the DIY, uh, type of enterprise or, or, or cloud source provider and you want to pull upstream and cobble it together yourself and you're going to spend the engineering time in the garage to go do that. And that might be good for like say who service providers and big, big somebody, operators. Yeah, somebody that has a, an absolute strategic benefit for building it themselves, which are not very many okay. uh, customers, right? Mm -hmm. It's only those that have some sort of secret sauce that they're going to inject into that. I would say predominantly um, where OpenStack is going to play will be for those uh, customers that want to have that uh, opinionated solution, as Boris put it, right? Or more baked you, out use cases. Or baked you out use cases, right? That have some yeah. guardrails set, right? Yeah. Choice is great, too much choice is really, really bad, right? Yeah. Because you get some of the analysis paralysis, like do I choose this, do I choose that? Yeah. And then you get some of the technical debt that can build up behind that if you make a, you know, a left turn when everybody else goes right. Unknown, unknowns, certainly in the enterprise business we know, seen, puts the brakes on. People, right. whoa, whoa, I need to see some, some proof points. So, Boris, with that, what are some of the use cases that you guys are seeing that are that are standardizing, that are accelerating, that are becoming much more, hey, I need a Ferrari because the roads can go fast, or hey, I need a bus because I've got more people coming in. So there's a lot of different use cases. What are the most common that you guys are seeing? Well, for OpenStack, there is uh, two major use cases, and those use cases, you know, one is, uh, I think, uh, specific to a particular vertical, another one cuts across all verticals. Um, one use case is uh, um, enabling DevOps, basically. Uh, OpenStack as a, as a platform for developers. It's much of the same use case that actually, you know, AWS is addressing. Um, it's an acute problem. Um, I think that AWS has paved the way for a lot of organizations, and in fact, a lot of organizations that we engage with, they have started with AWS. They've built kind of a significant AWS footprint. They were uh, kind of transformed into the cloud mindset and culture by their embrace of AWS, and once they've gotten comfortable with it, they want to bring some of that in-house, and they complement it with a private cloud that is OpenStack. Um, and that cuts across all segments. It's just enterprises, telcos, service providers, everybody's doing it. The other use case is pretty specific, and that use case is uh, around network function virtualization. Mm -hmm. So um, telco manufacturers, now telco equipment manufacturers, are going through the stage of uh, um, kind of a, you know, um, separation between uh, the software and the hardware. So before, you know, people would ship those huge boxes like mainframe-like switches uh, that are telco grade, they'll cost millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. The new paradigm is that you have uh, some sort of uh, virtual infrastructure management fabric, and on top of that you have a network functions that you can provision uh, in an agile fashion. And um, OpenStack has emerged as uh, the kind of almost de facto standard for uh, kind of uh, the NFV. Is cloud native a big use case? You're hearing, you're hearing about cloud native with OpenStack. Are people interested in that piece too? Well, I mean, that's... That's standard. Yeah, that's, that's, that, that goes to my right. first use case. Yeah. So that's, that that's, that's, that's cloud the native. That's right. correct. That's DevOps. DevOps cloud native stuff, exactly. Okay, so I guess in our last couple of minutes, I want to get you guys to answer a couple of questions. First sure. one is, does hybrid cloud exist? I mean, this is something that I want to put on the table. We've asked all the guests here. Is there a hybrid cloud? Is it a category? Is it a product? Do I, I want to buy some hybrid cloud? Do I just back the truck up and hybrid cloud just shows up? Is it? Yeah. Is it, support, is it subordinate to public-private? Is it the, yeah. the top level? It's a, it's a combination of the two, and I think that's the thing that people tend to forget sometimes, right? So uh, I don't think anybody will, be, will dispute that public cloud is there and it's available, right? So as we saw yesterday yeah. in Diane's presentation, the actual production implementation of private cloud is still very, very early. And what we mean by that is, you know, self-service portal, easy access directly yeah. for developers. Web services. Or exactly, all of those things. But that's and in a data center. The private cloud could right. be, hey, it's on-premise, right? And then the big thing for hybrid is when you connect that with the public cloud. So by default, <laughs> you know, if you have public cloud, but yet you don't have a predominant uh, you know, yeah. landscape of private cloud, you don't have hybrid cloud yet. 
Yeah. And so I think that we do in, in pockets and in the more sophisticated users, they are using what we would consider hybrid cloud, but I think there's a lot more that needs to happen for that. Is hybrid cloud the top level solution or outcome? Absolutely. And is private and public subordinate? Because if you say, I'm connecting them, that's just a kind of an umbrella to a, a concept then. It's right. like distributed so, computing. I mean, hybrid cloud wins, right? It is yeah. the, it will be the paradigm for how people consume and deliver IT services uh, in the business, right, uh, moving forward. But it's not a pure play kind of thing. There's no hybrid, or is there? What, what's your take on that? It's like, I mean, people try to put things in buckets. Is a hybrid cloud category? Is there a category? Is there a product? I mean, or is it just so a it's a It's a category. It's a category of how you deliver your IT service, right? Where you draw your resources from, how you connect the public mm -hmm. cloud to your private cloud. Are you sharing things like authentication and identity and some of those other policy type of things that you would normally do internally? And I think kind of our kind of bar is, is if it's absolutely seamless, to your users inside your, your enterprise, mm -hmm. that they don't know where their resources are coming from, they just select from the right criteria, um, and it either chooses in a public cloud environment or in a private cloud environment. If it's that seamless experience, you've actually reached hybrid cloud. So awesome, so basically, Boris, I want you to kind of go and take it to the next level, so like yeah. that answer. If I'm connecting, it's yeah. hybrid, right? And if it's yeah. seamless, it's even more hybrid. It's the right. ideal hybrid preferred yeah. environment. Yeah. Okay, now so let's go to the customer. I don't care about all that stuff. I got cash to spend. I have CapEx yeah. that I've invested in, legacy. I want cloud native DevOps, and yeah. uh, I got a lot of workloads I need to move around. Yeah. And Alex kind of brought this up yesterday, your co-founder, um, and we were, he's like, look at this, at the end of the day, it's I got cash, and I have how I buy and how I deploy. Right. right. What's right. your take on that? Yeah, no, I think that, uh, I, I mentioned that the most predominant use case is DevOps, and the consumer in the DevOps use case is a developer. And uh, the developer couldn't give a crap about, you know, the private or hybrid or whatever, right? Uh, the developer wants to just get exposed to a consistent set of APIs, hopefully, you know, high-level APIs to uh, be able to increase developer velocity. So for me, um, hybrid is just kind of like a feature of a cloud. Really, it's like, do you want to have your cloud in this data center and that data center, or do you want your application run to run in this rack or that rack? The developer doesn't really care, right? And uh, as far as uh, you know, our customers are concerned, um, you know, to, to your question of whether or not it exists, it absolutely does exist because, uh, that, for example, uh, Lithium on stage yesterday, and they were talking about how they uh, uh, have AWS and they have in-house OpenStack, and uh, they have an abstraction layer running across both of them, and the developers are exposed to that abstraction layer, and uh, it's really where where do you run this workload or that workload? It's very transparent to the developer, yeah. and a lot of people are doing that already now. And this is so, common with traditional tactics of policy-driven, software-driven infrastructure. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like your wheelhouse, <laughs> right? Exactly. I think that's the big that's the big shift we're seeing here is that developers are king, right? So yeah. they used to be second class citizens, kind of behind uh, whatever the infrastructure teams were allowing them to go yeah. do. I think the advent of AWS and the success of that has really raised the well, developers. Well, mobility too has put them closer to the Absolutely. customer. So developers used to be kind of, don't bring the developers in front of the yeah. customer, but now they're involved in UX decisions, really closer to the customer. So I totally agree yeah. with you on the, that. The developer yeah. is the, they're the first class citizen now, right? And you're starting to see the infrastructure teams catch up to their their needs and not wants and demands. Okay, final question for each of you guys to answer uh, individually is, um, what is the OpenStack Silicon Valley event about? I mean, it's a special place, obviously we live here, uh, mm -hmm. we love it, we love the Valley, Silicon Valley's great innovation, entrepreneurship to huge established companies driving change and, and, and changing the world. What's OpenStack's vibe here? What is, yeah. what's about OpenStack and Silicon Valley that's different than some of the other venues? Yeah, so um, I think I'm in a good position to answer this question. We uh, specifically purposefully called this uh, the Unlocked Infrastructure Conference, and what we meant by that is uh, this event is really about um, bringing OpenStack and the entire ecosystem of data center software components that interoperate with OpenStack. So the theme for this particular one is uh, OpenStack and containers. It might be something else next year. But uh, the whole notion here is that uh, we see OpenStack as this fabric that uh, um, eventually, as it evolves, we'll be able to glue together best of breed components um, and uh, kind of uh, put together the uh, innovation of the open community overall into a cohesive fabric consumable by the developer. So uh, this conference is about actually marrying OpenStack as that fabric with all of the different innovative components that uh, you know are becoming a new standard inside a particular kind of area in the data center. And a lot of players are here in Silicon Valley too. Right, and that's why, that's why we do it here, right? That's, that's because 
Hey, Jonathan, innovations. your take. Intel, I'll say, in Silicon Valley, huge presence. Right. You know, generations of innovation, Moore's Law. I mean, it's epic, it's yeah. been great. So what's your take of OpenStack and Silicon Valley, this event? Right, so I think the, the most interesting thing for us, and I was actually thinking about this this morning when I was doing the welcome, I looked out across the audience and I see you know, people that, oh, I need to go talk to this person, I need to go talk to this person. When we're at the larger events, right, you, 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 you ships in the night, right, you may say uh, hello and you may pass them by, but because this is such a focused event, um, with some good focus topics, and you draw a lot of the, the talent and a lot of the, the leaders in the community for OpenStack together, you actually get some of the time to actually have that community building experience to share, here's what's working, here's what's not. Hey, we should go work on this together uh, in the community, et cetera, et cetera. So I think this is a, a really good focused event um, to really push forward kind of the whole goal of the it's community. A, it's a really a great industry event too because people get to look at each what you, each other are doing, share best right. practices, avoid scar tissue, you know, exactly. see how people are making the money, exactly. and see how people can participate. Yeah, exactly correct. Jonathan Borst, thanks so much for spending the time on theCUBE, went a little bit over. Thank you. Sorry, Greg, our uh, producer, give me the hook many times, <laughs> but I wanted to get those questions, and thanks for sharing yeah, that insight. This is theCUBE, live in Silicon Valley. We'll be right back with more after this short break.